Hi, this is Tapcat. Welcome back to Marvel's Midnight Suns. We are ready to go on our newest story mission, Faustian Bargain. We have the Hunter, Captain Marvel, and Blade. All selected for us, by the way, we don't have any flexibility just yet in the campaign. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get this show on the road. Trench coat, sunglasses at night, leading personality. Gamma signatures and unstable isotopes aren't really in my wheelhouse, so we'll be patching Dr. Banner through from Avengers Tower once you reach the other side. Probably can scratch abandoned off the description of this place. You seeing this, Bruce? Getting all sorts of weird down there. Johan Fenhoff. That dick. I heard he was dead. Well, hoped is perhaps a more accurate description. Calls himself Faustus now. Hydra's resident mad scientist. Not just Hydras, Liliths. That's magic coming from those crates. I can feel it. Yeah? How about gamma radiation? You feeling that too? Because that's some pretty evil looking Hydra tech down there. Gamma and magic. <sighs> I need you to use your science brain on this one, Bruce. We need to approach this situation carefully. Combining those energies is an explosive proposition at best. Think scalpel, not hammer. Stealth, not strength. Yeah, I don't do stealth. Kill them. Right, simple enough objective. I've always considered Faustus a bit of a crackpot, but his fundamental science must be sound. The device would have surely exploded otherwise after your display, Carol. Learned it by watching you, Bruce. Okay, so we have two heroic cards, which we can't use yet. I might as well take advantage of quick. Uh, let's see, we have three guys going after the Hunter. Three after Captain Marvel. Um, actually, four after Captain Marvel. And she also has two of these, um, what do they call them, elites. They hit harder. They don't just have more health, they also hit harder. So let's do this. Let's try and take a little bit of the pressure Get off ready. of Carol. We're not going to run the table this turn, I don't think. So, you know, what we really want to do is just make sure that no one character gets beat up too badly. Um, so one thing we can also try to do. Well, I'm not going to be able to unless I do this. Okay, I tell you what. I'll draw two cards. That's fine. So what I'm trying to do here is build up our heroism a bit. That gets me to three, which is really critical because now Blade can actually use this and we can pretty easily take one of these guys down. I will need both of my remaining card plays, but that's all right. So let's do, let's do this. Let's have her soften them up. And she'll get a little bit of block out of this, which is also good. Because again, she is being targeted by multiple enemies. And this guy still has 31 health, but thankfully we can do 32 damage. Okay. Uh, we still have one heroism left. 
So if we wanted to, you know, we could do something like this. But we also have two heroic cards already in hand and we could easily draw more. I'm thinking we let things stand as they are. We did a pretty good job of thinning the field. I'm going to end my turn. And we'll, we'll, uh, what was I going to say? We'll just kind of harbor our heroism for use either for our heroic cards or trying to get more damage, more kills out of an environmental attack. Like there's an explosive barrel right here and there were already two guys in range around it. I've never been one to buy into the science of magic, but the data I'm seeing is hard Holy to crap. ignore. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio. Here's what I'm wondering. I know you're talking to a vampire, an alien hybrid, mm -hmm. and a resurrected demon hunter, right? Is it just me, or is killing four guys with one attack, like the cost of one heroism, good? <laughs> I feel pretty good about it. So that's what I meant when I said, let's just kind of keep our powder dry. You know what I'm saying? Let's wait and see. Okay, I I am really overloaded with heroic cards, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and throw that one away and redraw. Okay, so we could potentially take this guy out. Um, I would definitely like to take out another uh, one of these two this turn. I only have two card plays left. And unfortunately, there's no way I'm gonna build up to three heroism. So, realistically, since I have zero heroism now, I'm gonna play these two this turn, and that is it. Bummer, I don't, so notice if I attack this guy first, which I would really like to do, I don't have sufficient range to come over here. So if I want to use this attack, and I do, then what I need to do is just soften each of these two guys up. And that's fine. I mean, we need to do that anyway. And then, let me use Carol to just take this guy out. So at this point, there's two ways we can go. Oh, she got binary. Right, so if you play three Captain Marvel cards, you can get this ability called binary. And if you're wondering, this is a comic book thing. A number of years ago, she uh, her character was in outer space, and she, she went by the name binary. So uh, when she was binary, she was extremely powerful. And so this is like representing that in a way. Okay, so she's got that. Now that gives her a bunch of block and it increases her offense and stuff. So see, next time she's really gonna hit much, much harder. That makes my choice simple because what I had contemplated doing is, you know, do we wanna soften this guy up using one of these environmental attacks? And the answer now is clearly no. No, I don't wanna do that. I actually am thinking about um, redrawing this because if I'm I'm definitely going to use this I just don't see me being at five heroism next turn yeah see this we might actually be able to use redraws are very important by the way like you really need to to think every single turn about whether you are going to be able to use particular cards in your hand and if you're not then go ahead and discard them because you want to cycle through your deck to things that will be more useful. Within the particles themselves. How else could he be achieving such a high yield? I don't know, Bruce. I'll be sure to ask him when we're done punching out the bad guys. Hmm. Hold on. I was just thinking, um, can I can I take advantage of the knockback here? I think I can. Um hang on a second. Maybe it, hey Ray. Um, oh, 
If I use this, that's fine. Okay, I tell you what. Uh, let's go ahead and have her take this guy out. I'm on it. We won't take advantage of the knockback, but well, that's all right. Because I can have her do it without using a move. Her. Sorry. I'm so used to playing the hunter as a female character that when I think hunter, I think female. Of course, something. when I started this campaign, I made the hunter uh, a man, and so slightly different. Okay, this is actually really good because I can use, let's see, which one will do more damage? Okay, this will kill both. You know what, I'm gonna call that good. <laughs> Forceful knockback will do more damage than regular knockback. Perhaps not shockingly. Go now, quickly! Let's go, go, go! Ah, the perfect opportunity to field test mother's device. Right, so we want to recover this artifact. For the record, Bruce, I did not smash that thing. Noted, Carol. Perhaps you might direct all that energy towards your newfound adversaries instead. And the mysterious cargo they're attempting to escape with? Okay, so very important. We have an enemy with a shield who is protecting the artifact. We have to get his block down to zero. So you can see he has this blue bar. That's block. So he has 45 block we have to get through just to be able to get the artifact. After that, by the way, we still have to get through his 90 health. And at this stage of the game, that's significant. That's a lot for us. Okay, so um, I'm not super pleased with where our health is. Uh, okay, the good news is we have a lot of guys out here that are only um, minions. I have like no attacks hardly. Okay, let's do this because I won't even end up using a card play and we can take two guys off the board. Boom, boom. That's pretty key for us right now. Um... I only get to draw one card. Let's go ahead. Who has the lowest health? You're only at 36. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. It'll also give me some heroism to work with. I maybe should have thought about this before because that brings this ability into play. Um, why don't I? I may not even need to move her. Mm, I kind of do, though. No, I don't. I'm hitting those three. And I don't think I'm going to get more than those three. So I'm good with this. I'm only going to kill one, but I'm going to hurt the other two really badly. You asked for it. Okay. I want to redraw at least one of these. Okay, this is pretty perfect, actually. Or it 
would be, oh my God, I'm just short of hitting this guy. Well, that's okay. You know why? Because I saved my move earlier. Yeah, there's no reason for me to hold back. Perfect. We get a two for one. And we take out, you know, one of the one of the elites who hit harder. So we only have two guys left on the board, which is really good. Um, I'm tempted to do this so we can at least start working through his uh, block. Let's see. I could also do this. You know what? I'm going to do this. I would rather take somebody off the board completely. So that leaves us just one minion left, as well as this guy, who's kind of like a mini boss for this fight, but that's okay. Getting through that first turn without getting your butt completely handed to you is pretty important. So here, I think we have our first instance of a character being dazed. And basically, dazed just means he can't do anything until a specific number of actions go by. So let me show you Blade. Blade, unfortunately, has dazed three. That means I have to play three cards until he can do anything. So he's just on the shelf this whole turn. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Make Him Bleed because, you know, it's not going to do me any good whatsoever. Does anybody need a heal? Um, he's fine. She's fine. So I think we're, we're good not doing this. I'm going to go ahead and... Oh. I thought that attack had knocked back, but it was still a good play because I got the kill and... Um, okay, this is the one that I thought I was looking at. Oh, and again, I can't quite get him over there. That's a bummer. Okay. Can I... I can't even... Um, hmm. Well, I, I guess I'll... It's so depressing. Yeah. It is what it is. We'll get a kill. Save Blade from taking a little damage. And I didn't use a card play. So it's all good. It's just not as good as I wanted it to be. And now I think we are ready to lay the smack down on this guy. Uh, hold on. Oh, I see. He's immune to knockback. Well, that's okay. Um, we'll go ahead and attack him anyway, because this is going to do almost all the damage we needed to against that block. And we only have a limited number of turns. Uh, to get the artifact before the truck leaves, so we don't really want to screw around. Okay. Uh, I could do this, I guess. Ready up. We need heroism. More cards is, you know, always nice. So there's a couple ways we could go here, but I think just beating the holy hell out of this guy is good. They're really tough, and oftentimes, um, actually, I would say most of the time, they will daze whoever they hit. Uh, but now that his shield is gone, his block is gone, we can use this next turn. I could do it this turn if I had any remaining card plays. Uh, but I'm happy. I'm happy with this status. So we're going to take a little damage here. But we should be able to weather that storm pretty well. Yeah, see, he hits a little harder. Even without his shield, he hits harder than the other guys. But that's all right. We've whittled him down quite a bit. Okay, he's going to go into overload. To be crystal clear, we won't be able to recreate Faustus' experiment or track yeah, potential let me just future do this first. Without a baseline resonant sample from his initial occult catalyst. Got it. Stop the truck. Thanks, Bruce. Be quiet. Less thing to worry about. Approximately 16,342 more to go. I suggest starting with the remaining Hydra forces in your vicinity. Okay. 
So this guy is basically going to blow himself up, and we do not want to be standing in this red circle when he does it. Uh, by the way, depending on his health, sometimes doing that kills him, but sometimes it doesn't. We want to attack somebody that will get me completely out of that stupid circle. Here. Does, does anybody need a heal? No. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and dump this. It's been clogging up my hand for a little while here. Okay. I like this. I'm really big on two for ones, if you can't tell. Uh, and unfortunately, that's all my card plays. But we only have two enemies left. And he's not going to attack anybody. He's just going to blow himself up. So uh, I'm pretty good with that. We do have some heroism, so I could take this guy out. But my health is so high, there's no real reason to worry about it. And depending on re what reinforcements come, I might be a lot better off with the heroism. Oh, that's right. There won't be any reinforcements. I forgot. You're way out of your league. Um... Because of the fact be quite frustrating. Infuriating even. Okay. I suppose by now I'd normally be tromping through the warehouse hurling the puny truck at the moon. Don't worry, Bruce. I've got All this chatter um, really interrupts the flow sometimes. So I forgot what I was gonna say. Let's just take care of business. No mercy for the servants. Oh, I remember. Because I completed the mission objective, reinforcements stop coming. Of now okay. I teach them to fear well, I'm um, down with this. This is a serious predicament for you. So I have two heroism and one card play left, and there we go. This will be the end of the mission. stuff I know those symbols from the time of the first hunt that cliff means barrier that one almighty something something gods and demons so a spooky bad guy crate very spooky designed to contain powerful magic be careful <sighs> got it don't cross the streams never do how about we get this thing back to the Abbey and see for ourselves? All right. Nice job out there, kid. I mean, I didn't get Hydra bombed until my 10th run with the Avengers. Kid, you do know that I'm a good three centuries older than you, right? Then you've got a lot of catching up to do. Okay, Abbey tournament tonight. Sure about that? Last one got a little heated. The eternal spirits of vengeance take technical fouls very seriously, especially in fourth quarter. Forget it. Tonight is movie night. It is always movie night. Exactly. Wow, out of jail again? Who made this game? Wilson Fisk? Well, if parking is free, clearly no one from Manhattan. You know what they say, all work and no play is how we ended up with Ultron. Come on, you should hang out. I should rest. Another time. <laughs> Let me see. How did this work again? Okay. 
So Nico is saying I should come out. Thank you, but I'm tired. Now this is going to start a whole cutscene. It's our first, what they call hangout, where you build friendship with people. I am going to show this one in its entirety. However, I just want you to know in the future, I'm gonna be more selective about which ones I show and which ones I don't, because a lot of them are honestly pretty bland and not much gets said of any real meaning. Let's go ahead and do this one. Ugh, you're as stubborn as Blade. Good, you answered. Getting hard to keep finding ways to say open door around here. And despite what Robbie says, I don't think the staff of one speaks high elven. Blood magic stuff. Cool room, spacious. Aw, is that bed for Charlie? Yes. So, if you're planning on giving me some sort of brooding code of the stoic warrior speech, I'm immune. Just ask later magic. From what I just saw out there, whatever crazy ancient living weapon stuff Caretaker put you through back in the day did a real number on you. We got a lot of work to do. Work? Yeah, talking to people, making friends, basic human stuff or quasi-human. <laughs> You're a midnight sun now. One of us. Nico, I was just hydra-bombed. I could use some rest. You and me both. Been bad dreams every night for me lately. I, uh, keep seeing Wanda. She... Never mind. <sighs> I will meet you outside. Yes! I'll go nuke us some popcorn and you pick out a movie. Oh, and it may just be the two of us. The others went outside, needed to cool off. Really need to hang a fan over that forge. Or maybe crack open the casket of ancient wonders a little? So Dr. Faustus tried to drop a warehouse on you? Ugh, that guy is so lame. Talk about a prototypical follower. I know this entire situation's gotta suck for you. Not just the whole resurrected, chosen one thing. I get why facing Lilith won't be easy. I was 15 when I found out my mother was capital E evil. Was your father there for you when you found out? Uh, Dad was evil too. Long story, lots of drama. Um, there was a cool dinosaur. I'll fill you in later. Look, I'm glad my mother is gone, but yeah, at times I just want to hear her voice again. Some days I'd give anything to make that happen. Makes me hate her even more. I did not realize you carried such pain. I just learned to bury it. You think I can afford a therapist on a superhero salary? I'm kidding. We don't get paid for this. Uh, enough about our crappy parents. You missed out on decades of good movies. It's my solemn duty to fill this knowledge gap with the best examples I can provide. So, the first thing you need to know, the glowing briefcase is a metaphor. I won't forget it. All right, so we got seven friendship gained with Nico. Now, uh, you have the chance to earn friendship with some of your responses. I did not, so what that means is I, I chose poorly. So, what did you think of the movie? I understood more than I should. How? You've been dead for three centuries. I'm not so sure I was dead. Not exactly. I recall a deep slumber, not the void. I... I dreamt. Of what? Of everything. Much of this world is familiar to me. I know it from my dreams. Uh, that's not creepy at all. So, do you know everything? No, I... Think of it like this. 
I know what a car is, but I have no idea how to drive. You're up to date, but not omniscient. <laughs> then I'm guessing you don't know much about me. Just what you shared earlier. You're always free to ask. Like, what's the staff of one, or who were the runaways? I had some questions about your staff. Uh, sure. Uh, but first, um, the basics. The Staff of One interprets words or phrases as spells, but it can only cast a spell once. No repeats. Can you tell me how the Staff of One functions? It's, uh, blood magic, so my own blood is required to summon it. You wouldn't believe how many adhesive bandages I go through each year. What about the words you speak? They come true. Uh, kind of. And not always the way I expect. It's like making a wish, but you can never make the same wish again. I should get going. Uh, good, good timing. Um, looks like Caretaker wants to speak with you, and wow, I should get to bed. Time flies when you're hanging out. I'm glad to see you using your free time productively. It's a shame that Faustus got away, but I doubt he'll leave the city until his objectives are complete. Looks like you're finding your way around. Maybe making some new friends. I was planning on getting some rest, but... Things are moving at a frantic pace. For all we know, I'll be landing a jet on the roof with Mr. Stark this afternoon. <sighs> Not quite like it was in the good old days. I remember many sleepless nights and blood-soaked days. Always on the hunt. I'll give you that. But there were times back then I wouldn't trade for anything. With both you and... Agatha. Where is Agatha? I'm sorry. I should have had this talk with you much sooner. But you should know... Agatha... She's no longer with us. What? Th that is impossible. She was so... Fierce. Indomitable. Or maybe just kind to a fault. Agatha's power... How could she be... gone? She put her trust in the wrong person. Agatha died in an accident caused by her protege, Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch. The Midnight Sun's latest recruit, a powerful spellcaster in her own right. Perhaps the most powerful Agatha and I had ever seen. Wanda's abilities were growing. Too quickly for my liking. Agatha was determined to help her control them. I tried to caution her, but she would not listen. There was an incident. An accident, I'm sure, but... Agatha was killed. Yes. Incinerated in an instant. Not even ash to remember her by. The others were heartbroken. As was I. But I also saw the danger. The threat. If Wanda's powers were left unchecked. So I did what needed to be done. I sent Wanda away to the Sanctum Sanctorum, to study under Doctor Strange. I know the others still harbor a great deal of resentment towards me for it. I do not envy you. That must have been a difficult decision. It's my job to make tough calls. I'm not popular for it, I know. But strong leadership requires risking being unliked. <sighs> Wanda. Agatha, it seems we have lost them both now. I conjured a small shrine to Agatha's memory on the grounds, hoping to find some solace, a way to move forward. You should pay your respects. Maybe you'll find what I couldn't. Good night, Hunter. <laughs> So this story 
about what happened between Wanda and Agatha. There's a lot more to that than caretaker, well, even knows, let alone what she tells you. That storyline gets unveiled if you take your time exploring the grounds around the Abbey. And that is hours of exploration. I'm not positive we'll do that in this playthrough. We may. I, I guess you can give me feedback on how interested you are in that. Agatha. You always did have the most remarkable eyes, Hunter. Just like your mother's. Maybe that's why you're the first. The first? To commune with the spirits, of course. <laughs> Is this a trick of some kind? Because I am not amused. No, oh, it's no trick, dear. You're just the first to see me. By now you've heard I had a bit of trouble with my corporeal body. I actually find it quite liberating. You are dead. Always straight to the heart of things. That's my hunter. You seem strangely at ease about this whole thing. After a thousand years of living, you learn to take things in stride. Even death. And what have you been doing all this time? Meet me by the cave just over there. You know the one. The Bloodgate? Caretaker always told me to stay away from that place. I think we can safely lift the veil on a few more of our secrets. What's the worst that can happen? Funny for someone to say what's the worst that can happen when they literally died um, doing something not all that different from what we're doing right now. <laughs> looking portal is known as a blood gate and you're the only one among us who can pass through it blood gate caretakers handiwork yes Sarah got a little overprotective after the accident with Wanda it's become something of a habit for her I have noticed that what lies beyond is meant for you as much as it ever was for her assuming you're up to the challenge that is you know I am I do, but it's always polite to ask. Ominous indeed. So this will trigger a fight. stood within these celestial halls to prove their worth. This particular arena belongs to a goddess who often favored Sarah, Ashtor. Sarah, caretaker, was here? Nothing ever comes easy, dear. The Elder Gods felt their descendants needed to earn their blessings, which is why they created these trials to begin with. Trials? I should have known. This entire realm exists for that purpose. Trial by combat, with no chance of outside interference. Yes, but I may have found a loophole they never considered. Why don't you try summoning your four-legged friend? <laughs> for a great many creations, including your faithful companion. I think even they tend to forget that. Good luck, dear. So I mentioned... The goddess of balance and order, Ashtor was sometimes called the giver of justice. You can expect a fair fight, 
Or at least her idea of one. I mentioned last episode that you should always pet Charlie uh, every day if you can. And this is a big part of why I said that. Because petting Charlie levels her up. And it makes her more powerful, essentially. And so in these challenges, because uh, there are more, they get progressively more difficult, as you might imagine. And uh, it really, really helps if Charlie is more of an ass kicker. Your mother abandons you. So, who's going to take more damage? Right now, it's pretty evenly spread. I think what I want to do here... You have earned this. We got to start working down the health of, you know, this tougher, the, the, the elite. Uh, but at the same time, actually, I think I'd rather hold that. Uh, let's do the same thing here. We get rid of another one of these guys. Soften up another one of the the big dogs. Maybe what I should have done is use it on him, and I might have killed that one. I think that was the better play. Uh, alas, I thought of it too late. Uh, hopefully, we will live to tell the tale. So they've corrupted both Charlie and I. That's not great. Compared to our girl, these hellhounds are nothing but mindless beasts. Don't hesitate so, to strike. So, <clears throat> if Agatha won't. will quiet down, I'll <laughs> finish my thought. So if you look at what Corrupted does for the next two turns, I'll take eight damage at the end of my turn. Uh, so that's not great for me. Okay, um, gonna be kind of difficult to use knockback right now. So I think what I'll do, come over here. So this guy's done. Okay, I don't think the vulnerable is really gonna matter so much. They both have the same health. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. It's pretty huge taking one of the elites off the board. Did changing his angle matter? No, it didn't. Uh, but that's okay. We actually have this. We take this one out with the one attack. I still have one card play. And Charlie can now finish the job. Good girl, Charlie. Oh, and you too, Hunter. You finish this trial, but don't worry. The other gods are waiting. Yes, they are. And I can tell you the challenges do get <laughs> just a little more difficult as you go. It's clobbering time. That's something Ben Grimm, also known as the Thing in the Fantastic Four, is very well known for saying. Uh, the hunter isn't really known for saying anything because they never existed prior to this game. <laughs> so our reward now is to claim this moon seal, which we will then immediately put on this plinth. I tend to think of it as a pedestal, because that's what it looks like to me. So now we have this, which will allow us to open certain gates. Sarah, right to be wary of this place, but it's your birthright, and I think after everything you've been through, you can handle it now. The two of you, as well as your mother, are the last of your kind, the blood. Your lineage follows an unbroken line to the old gods themselves. And if you call upon them, 
you might just find they're actually listening. They won't work miracles for you, but their blessings can be quite useful in the right circumstance. Why don't you ask the goddess Ashtor for her aid in dealing with that barrier over there? So you can see there's four words of power in the game. We've only unlocked this one. Blessings of the goddess. We have a um God, what do they call these stupid things? I don't remember. It's a chest. It's a chest, yeah. I don't have any arcane keys at the moment. Uh, which is fine. So the chests largely just give you cosmetic stuff. That's a ton. After all this time, it's still just as beautiful as the first time I laid eyes on it. It's hard to believe Lilith and Caretaker brought this place all the way from Transia. Of course, it was no coincidence that they wound up so close to Salem. This area is particularly attuned to the forces of magic. That's why the Elder God's influence was so prevalent here. And why our sanctuary here has remained all but impregnable over the centuries. <laughs> and now I'm rambling on like an old Sorcerer Supreme. Why don't you come see me in the library tomorrow night? Oh, and... Let's keep this just between the two of us for now. I'm afraid Sarah... Caretaker isn't ready to see me yet. Good night, Hunter. Okay, let's pet Charlie. Good girl, Charlie. And by the way, Charlie doesn't always appear in your room in the morning. Uh, as the game goes on, she will she will be in all kinds of different places. Uh, is this thing on? Uh, Hunter, please come to the forge at your earliest convenience. And we're going to try and wrap this up here in just the next Hunter, minute or two. just in time. His royal weirdness and I were deciding what to do with that nasty little Hydra gift box you found. Ah, yes. The spooky crate? The very one. Though it is far from any mere container, I assure you. I am detecting powerful emanations from inside. If this is a sign of what Hydra is after, I fear we are all in grave danger. My offer still stands. I could fly the thing up and nuke it in orbit. Only way to be sure. Or we could open it, Tony. And perhaps use the mystical energies I sense inside to our advantage? Yeah, I heard a we in there. <laughs> Green goopy gamma serums are one thing. I'm not opening boxes full of mummy curses. You don't have to. Hunter, if you'll allow me. Your second funeral, boss. If Hydra is now working to acquire mystical antiquities, then our situation is very dire indeed. We need to find a way to gain the upper hand. And you think you can do it with whatever's in the container? Tony has one of the greatest scientific minds that I've ever seen. I, of course, have an unparalleled understanding of the mystic arts. I have no doubt that we can find a way to research whatever we find in there and have it work in our favor. I just wonder what it could be. Do you think this will be enough to give us an edge? I hope so. Whatever it is, it's quite powerful. I'm relying on my instincts here, but truly that's all I have to rely on until I can find a way to access the Sanctum's archives again. That seems a bit risky. Right now, with the Sanctum out of my reach, I'm fighting with one hand tied behind my back. It, metaphorically, that is. If I can find items to research, I can give the Midnight Suns every possible advantage over Lilith and her disciples. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. 
Me too, Hunter. Now, all this talk is going nowhere unless we can get this container open and study what's inside. Approach the anvil, Hunter. We do not have time to spare. How may the Sorcerer Supreme assist you? All right, we're going to study the artifact. By the hoary hosts of Hoggoth, I, I can hardly believe it. What? Is it worse than you expected? No, it's totally unexpected. It's the Eternity Dagger. This was in a place of honor in my bedchamber in the Sanctum for years. The Sanctum Sanctorum is no common domicile to be burglared. These barbarians have no idea what they possessed. Or perhaps they did. Maybe these artifacts are exactly what Faustus and my mother were after to begin with. A distressing thought. If they had my dagger, then who knows what others of my priceless possessions have passed through their greedy fingers. The cube of nothingness. The tear of Prophia, and most worrisome of all. Your toothbrush? You, uh, had a little coffee thing going on this morning with your breath? Oh, Tony. Sorry. Doc's right, Hunter. I drank three glasses of holy water just to walk through the Sanctum's front door. The place is like a doomsday vault for all sorts of supernatural nastiness. We need to put a lid on this mess. Pronto. I believe Carol is already working on it. At last. Now that this artifact has been returned to its proper owner, we shall see if we can make use of the mystic forces contained within. Fascinating. This artifact is mundane in every conceivable way. Okay. So, <clears throat> setting aside the uh, large amount of talking, the key is when you go on a mission where you recover artifacts, and that's a regular thing throughout the game, this really isn't you bring it back, you have strange, re you know, um, analyze it, and what happens is it increases your research level. Now, increasing your research level is very, very important because right now we only have access to level one research. However, there are, um, I believe, 11 levels that you can ultimately unlock at the very end of the game. There's one that's level 15 that you can do, but for the most part, you go up through level 11. Um, so we right now have a choice between two, and then this one, notice how it's grayed out. So um, most of these have some sort of prerequisite. So like war games, you have to complete one mission with Captain Marvel, we've done that. This one, one mission with Doctor Strange, we've done that. So both of these are open. But this one wants us to have completed three missions with Blade, and we've only done two. Uh, that's fine. Um, let's see. Both of these are schematics, which means that after I do it, it will um, require me to pay credits to build whatever this thing is. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one first, because what it's saying is, when we have them analyze, when Stark analyzes a coil, and last time we had three cards that it showed us, this way we'll get four to choose between. Okay. So let's go ahead and do the coil analysis from the mission we ran. Got some upgrades for you, hot off the press. Or forge. Okay, so I'll go ahead and take this. Um, I'm going to try to play Dark Hunter uh, in this campaign. I did Light Hunter when I was playing off camera, so this will help give me something new, you know? Something I can discover along with you, how all this works. I do need to start upgrading the other's abilities as well. But you end up bringing the hunter on pretty much every mission, so focusing on him first is not a bad idea. Okay. So what they're saying is, hey, you know, now you have this card that you didn't used to have, so do you want to change your deck up? 
And uh, this is where you can really make some difficult decisions because, sure, I want this, but then I have these other cards that I'm very happy with. Now, I can pull the regular heal out, and if I want to play Dark Hunter, I kind of need to because it's a light ability. Uh, but what sucks is that uh, it doesn't give me any heroism. This one gave me two, but Dark Heal doesn't give me any. And that's going to matter over the course of the campaign. I'm going to do it for now at least, but yeah. Hey, okay. Uh, got a sec to spare? So you know what? I was really trying to get to the point where we would um, move forward with the next mission when we started our next you know, episode. But uh, we're now very close to an hour in and they just keep bombarding me with talk, 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 talk. <laughs> We are, I think, getting close, but let's just go ahead. I'm gonna stop it here. When we come back, we'll talk to Robbie. Uh, we'll we'll go to train or spar rather in the yard. And then after that, we should be able to go on a mission. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope we see you next time.